On today's show, who got a better deal out of the Kawhi Leonard extension, the Clippers or Kawhi himself? And we'll talk about the Celtics pulling through in the clutch against the Timberwolves, plus the Bucks going extra clean with it. We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On NBA. Let's go. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome. You are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On NBA your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, leave a five-star review, like the video, comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section, was the Kawhi Leonard extension a better deal for the Clippers or for Kawhi? This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash NBA and use the code LOCKEDONNBA, all lowercase, for first deposit match up to $100. And joining me as always on a Thursday, what you got for me, Pat the Designer? Kobe White most improved. I'm starting it right now. Oh, Dominating right here on a national Shingun. platform. <laughs> Dominating Alperin Shingun. Not really dominating. He was. He's the reason we went to overtime, but still. <laughs> Kobe White. Most approved player. <laughs> oh, a positive Bulls thing we can finally say. The I don't uptick, have much. I don't have much. The uptick. The bear season ends and all of a sudden it, Pat's happier. No, no, no. Let's not, let's not go there. Let's keep it where we got it. Okay. We'll keep it. We'll talk about the Celtics and the Timberwolves. Go down to overtime. A couple overtime games tonight. But we'll focus on that one with the uh, Boston Celtics pulling in in the clutch. How did they get that done? What happened to the Wolves late in this one? We'll talk about that. We'll also play Count It Up, where we talk about the most interesting, fun things in the NBA, including the Bucks and their equipment manager catching some strays. There you go. D'Angelo Russell has some wild takes on a podcast, but that may not be the most wild thing that happened on that podcast. Victor Wembanyama with a triple-double. Uh, Draymond Green almost quit, and we'll talk about all that. But, Pat, I want to start here. Kawhi Leonard signs a three-year, 152.4. Point four is, uh, is uh, very important. Crucial. Point four. Very important. Extension point four. with a 15% trade kicker. It's fully guaranteed. He was eligible for 161 over three years if it's going to be a $142 million cap. And so he did take a little bit like a $9 million pay cut, basically. So like $3 million a year, basically a pay cut. When you look at this deal, is it a good deal for the Clippers? Kawhi? Both? Neither? Uh, I think this is a great deal for uh, Kawhi Leonard uh, because of the history that Kawhi has had with the injury things and different things like that, right? Whether he's playing well now, he's playing much more healthy. It feels like this is a Clippers thing now. Like, doesn't this, it kind of makes the Clippers look really, really bad with him just not having any issues being oh, able to play every <laughs> single game. This season. What's he missed? Two games this year, I believe. For, yeah, not total? many. Yeah. I, I mean, like, he's he's really done a good job playing on the court. Uh, should be available as long as nothing major happens for all injuries. But Kawhi Leonard's a player that's getting older, and you want to be able to get your bag while you can. Yes, there's a little bit of a pay cut in there, but he's locked in. It is all guaranteed. And so for me, uh, four games he's missed this season, yeah, that's that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, really makes the Clippers look like, hey, guys, were you just telling him not to play games like he said you were? Uh <laughs> But I just I, I I think that this is great because it's it's fully guaranteed and no matter what he's going to get his bag. I love that for Kawhi Leonard and I think that this deal uh, benefits him more. Now where it benefits the Clippers, I guess, is the fact that Kawhi Leonard's been on the court more so. Kawhi's health is benefiting the Clippers than the money that they have to pay him. And because of that, I think that maybe you got to pay him a little bit less, but. It's not much less. Let's not pretend like Kawhi's not getting a bag. Here. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's and it, it's also I'm I'm not gonna I'm not necessarily here for maybe there's some like advanced calculus I can do with the yeah. second apron where Kawhi helped save them because they're all they're looking at a Paul George deal too, right? I mean they're looking at that and they're they're staring down the barrel of that and then uh, they got to think about James Harden too, right? Isn't James Harden? Uh, yeah, they? James Harden's going to be a do free they? agent this summer. They do. <laughs> they, they do. do. I mean, but do they? Gonna, but they do. They got to think about a James Harden extension too, and, or re-signing him this summer. And so you've got to make that decision. And so maybe that maybe there's some reason why he took that much less. Maybe there's some kind of like they're going to avoid the second. Like I don't know. They're way over everything. So yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah, I can't imagine that they pretty. would. I can't imagine that they would. But Lawrence Frank, the president of basketball operations, was asked about this, and he said anybody can get injured. Not everybody can be a top five player. 
which is a bar to me. That's a bar yeah. hearing that because it's true. So I think this is a good deal. Well, I'll answer yours. It's it's a good deal for Kawhi because he's getting that fully guaranteed. He's 32. He's had these injuries. I mean, you know, in, in the past, obviously yeah. they've been well, they've been well documented. And uh, I think that it, it's good for him to get that guaranteed money for it to be fully guaranteed to me though. I think it's a better deal for the Clippers. Mm. Even though he he has had these injuries, they keep somebody. And this is a huge deal for the Clippers. I was looking at, I was, I was scrolling through and I was trying to figure out what Clippers fans thought about this. And Darian Vaziri, locked on Clippers, had this the take biggest basic, Clipper fan. The, yeah, the biggest one I know. Like he's even literally bigger. the biggest Clipper fan I know. <laughs> and host a daily Clippers show, locked on. Oh Clippers. yeah, good man, good man. And he. He said, this is a big deal for the Clippers because I was nervous when the Kawhi deal happened at first because they had to re-sign him the first time. Like they had to, yeah. to come in and re-sign him. And then now they've re-signed him twice. And now they've re-signed him to coming into this new arena that's coming in that where the Clippers are branching out on their own. Like this is this this deal to me for the Clippers signifies their move from the joke that the Clippers were. <laughs> All the jokes we've been making about some of these like poverty franchises, the Clippers were one of those poverty franchises for a long time. Like, don't forget, like when you and I were, were younger and we were kids, or the younger. Clippers were trash. <laughs> they were terrible for so long. It was like they've had all these playoff droughts and they were always the little brother. And now they're branching out on their own. It's like, okay, they're branching out on their own. Now it's like Kawhi Leonard signing this extension to me is like, you got health insurance after you, after you move out, right? Like you, you get yeah. health insurance with a big boy job. And now you like are viable enough to move to your own arena and to have something that makes you like viable going forward. And so to me, I think this is, it signifies that move for them because there was a chance that Kawhi and Paul George would, would leave. Like we've been kind of talking about that and rumoring about it. And James Harden's going to be a free agent. Like all, there's a lot of up in the air with them. And for them to sign this deal to me signifies that, that, you know, that they're, that they're here. I, I think what is to me, it more signifies, right. Who the number, who, who's, who's the guy they believe in most. We have to get a deal done with Kawhi Leonard. We know that he can be very much like they said, right. A top five player when he's in the lineup and he's healthy and good to go. But to me, I, I don't know if I, like, are the Clippers out of the things that we thought? We've seen good Clippers teams, right? The 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 uh, Chris not Paul sustain, Clippers. Not, not sustained, though. Like yeah, this. but I, I think the thing is, right, like the Chris Paul Clippers were a good Clippers team. The, uh, the post-Chris Paul Clippers were a good Clippers team. The problem is, have we seen championship Clippers? I don't know if nope. we're any closer to that. I don't, I don't know if signing Kawhi to this extension gets us any closer to that because does Paul George believe in the vision? Does James Harden believe in the vision sticking around? Are we just expecting James Harden to all of a sudden be happy in a spot for more than two years? We haven't seen that since Houston. So I just I don't know if everything has changed about the perception of the Clippers yet. Let's let them go out there. Let's let them get to, hey, get to an NBA Finals, and then perceptions start changing. When we see the Clippers in an NBA Finals, I'll start to think of it a little bit differently. But until then... Listen, I'm I'm with Shaq. They're they're always going to be little brother to the Lakers in that building. They're they're that they're moving out of the building. That's my point. Is that they're moving hey. out of the building. They're trying to come. They're trying to get away from that that whole mentality because it was a whole mentality. Yeah. They covered the banners. Yeah. They they were in Staples Center and covered the banners, and they couldn't cover them with their own. They had to cover them with the <laughs> banners of like Blake Griffin, a forty foot tall Blake Griffin. They had to cover them up with. It's just, uh, it's just Blake pointing with like it's just a basketball in his hand going. <laughs> Sorry, is that a championship banner next no, to just, next to uh, Blake next to Michael Jackson and Nelson Mandela and basically yeah. Ali. You, you, yeah, remember, you, you remember that yeah, shirt you just put them all up yeah 100 percent uh Lob City also was six seasons we're now in the fifth season of this Kawhi Leonard Paul George thing so like yeah and it's now been since 2000 basically like 2011 that the Clippers have been good and they've been good, over 500 every single year since then. So to me, I'm, that, that's why I'm saying like they've now officially like come out of that phase of, you know, you combine these two, you combine the success of Lob City with the success of this team to now, yeah. all right, this is a real NBA team. This is not like the joke that they were for so long. No, I agree with that. I just think that I think we've gotten to this point. Right, like yes, it's it's been in the same building, and maybe they're moving out, and maybe they're growing up and doing. But we've gotten to this point. Can we get past this point? This is a really good Clippers team. I've seen really good Clippers teams. I've seen them lose in the second round. I've seen the Clippers be the favorites going to the NBA Finals. I've seen them lose in the second round. 
Yeah, I, I mean, think, like, I, I want to see a Clippers team get paid. I want Darian to be able to to be excited about a Western Conference Finals team. That's <laughs> all I want. I just They did it once. They went there once. but They got there once. But to it, me, I, to me, I think they, this can be a successful extension without them doing that, I think. I, oh, I, don't, yeah. Listen, I don't really th- I don't think he's a top five player. It's it, it's it's separate to me in in every sense because Kawhi Leonard to me is I, I, I do believe he's a top player top five player. I think that he's elite when he's on the court. I think there's not many people that stand across from Kawhi Leonard and can go, yeah, I'm gonna shut him down. Jokic, Embiid, Giannis, Luca. Go, you can go Steph with that one last one. You can go. There's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Listen, I'd 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 put a healthy Kawhi over Luca. That's just me though. I, I know I know you're locked on Mavs. I know all half of your audience is listening, but I put a healthy Kawhi over Luke because I've seen him shut it down. I've seen him win in the NBA Finals. I've seen him dominate in NBA Finals. Yes, it's an NBA Finals where Kevin Durant was hurt and he was getting cooked before that. We all understand the context of it. But I've seen him get to that point. And on a team that was much less talented than what Luka Doncic has. Luka, oh, oh, that's Luka Toronto went to team? To, oh my God, we're that, not doing this. That's Toronto the, team? At Pat the Designer, uh, that Toronto team was better than what the Mavs have right now. That you took Kawhi Leonard off of that Toronto team. They're basically the They're same deeper. team, and they haven't been back to the the Eastern Conference Finals since. At all, all the Mavs fans that are here, at, Adam, at, at, Pat, at, the, at, at Pat the at Designer me. on Twitter, and bring uh, it. Just go also follow. Appreciate you guys. You guys <laughs> coming up. Let's talk about how the Boston Celtics got an overtime win against Minnesota. The Timberwolves were up by. Uh, nine points with three and a half left. Did they blow it or did the Celtics come in and take it? We'll talk about that and more coming up. Hey, yo. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You can go on Prize Picks right now and you can just pick the two, pick two to six players and their stat projections. You pick more or less on what they're going to be and you can win on that. You can combine that with NBA, NFL. Uh, PGA, soccer, all kinds of stuff. Euro, go- Euro golf. That one, that one threw that one threw me off. Price picks. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. All of a sudden, I start reading through, and I'm like, Euro golf. Yeah. Rory McIlroy, six. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Rory McIlroy, sixty-seven and a half strokes, more or less. You know what? I'm gonna take more on that. I'm gonna take more. Pause. More, more strokes. I'm gonna take more. I'm gonna take more. <laughs> they shouldn't let us do this. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood, sixty-eight. Strokes more or less. Uh, one more, please. <laughs> Over doing more than sixty-eight. One more. One more. One more, please. I don't even know what the competition is. That <laughs> Whatever Euro golf is, uh, but you can check out something like that if you're into that. If you're into Euro golf, if you're into some of these other things, you can check it out and combine it all. It's super fun. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use that code locked on NBA, all lowercase locked on NBA for first deposit match up to $100. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us on locked on NBA, being in every day or listening every day. We have a 24 <laughs> 7, 24 7 streaming uh, channel that covers. The national stories on the Lockdown Sports Today YouTube channel, as well as on Fire Stick TV. We've got Lockdown Sports uh, Atlanta, Lockdown Sports Minnesota, Lockdown Sports Dallas, Lockdown Sports Los Angeles. If you're a fan of one of those cities, of the teams of some of those cities, we've got a 24-7 stream on YouTube or on Fire Stick TV or a bunch of other places where you can check out uh, some of your favorite shows on there or sample some other ones. So check it out, Lockdown Sports Today and everywhere else. All right, Pat. The... Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. I keep wanting to say Milwaukee. I don't know. Why. The Minnesota <laughs> the Milwaukee Timberwolves, Timberwolves lose. Here we go. It's all, it's all up there. It's all, it's all cold up there right now. Is what, <laughs> 120 to 127. They were up by nine. Uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker had some huge plays late in this game in the last five minutes of, of regulation. He had a reverse finish off contact. That was a great play. He had another attack to put them up nine. He had another three. He was all over the place. And then Jason Tatum kind of just took over this game at a certain point. The, the Timberwolves were on a second night of a back-to-back. There was no Gobert, no Mike Conley for the Timberwolves. They had a weird thing where they flew in on game day. Like, their, yeah. their plane got stuck. Speaking of snow and all that, their plane got got stuck, and so they weren't able to fly the night before. They had to fly the that same day of the game. So, honestly, to me, a real resilience from the Timberwolves to be in this game. They got great stuff from Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Uh, Anthony Edwards, 29 in this one. Towns had 25. 
and 13. What did you see from, let's start with the Timberwolves side of this. I mean, listen, I, I, I saw a Timberwolves team that was begging for Carl Anthony Towns to do a little bit more uh, in that fourth quarter. Definitely. Just just anything more. I, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't get the disappearance of Cat so often. I love that Nikhil Alexander Walker was cooking, but when it got down to stretch, right, you saw Cat go down the lane, really tough play, trying to get to the lane, drawing the foul, right? Like, but it, I was like, why are we in the fourth quarter talking about this as we're getting ready to possibly head towards overtime? Like, I just, I, I, I love everything about the Timberwolves, except when the Timberwolves need a number two most, it seems like he's never there. And Count he on. was supposed Count to be the number one. Counted up zero field goals in the fourth quarter. He played 11 minutes. I, I just, I don't understand it. It's mind blowing to me. We see Anthony Edwards. And, and here's the thing. It's not like Cat played poorly in this game. Quarters no. one through three. The, the third quarter, Carl Anthony Towns was absolutely cooking. I had to switch TVs. I got a little two TV set up here. I had to put the Bulls on a smaller TV because I kept like, as I was working out, I kept glancing over and being like, did Cat just get to the bucket again? Did Cat just get to the bucket again? And I switched the TVs up so that I could see it on the – because he was dominating so much. And I was like, oh, man, he's got it. We got to keep getting in the ball, go to the fourth quarter. I like this Timberwolves team, but there needs to be a consistent number two on this team, and that guy constantly disappears. Yeah, Towns didn't score – didn't take a shot in the fourth quarter at all. And then overtime comes. He immediately drives the basket right through Tatum and through Horford, who came over to help. Got the end one, put the Timberwolves up three, and Jim Peterson on the Timberwolves broadcast goes, where was that for like the last 12 minutes of the game? It'd be, that's, that's it'd be the your own question. people sometimes. It'd be your own people, bro. That's the biggest question. I He has all the talent in the world. And, and it's clear that there are times where he's just the number two. But – <laughs> a number two gets shots up. Like I literally watched all of that fourth quarter and I was like, I would Carl Anthony Towns, one of the most talented players in the NBA. And I don't think I'd want him on my team because when you need him most, he's the avatar. He's gone. He vanished. <laughs> when you need him most, oh, he's gone. That is the greatest reference you could have ever made on this show. And that's why this works. Uh, yeah, no. So for the, from the town side of it, you know, uh, it was great for the Timberwolves to be in this game. I'll, I'll just leave it at that for yeah. them, for them, for them to fly in that day and do all this. No go bear. No, no Conley, like missing two starters on the Celtics side of things. No Porzingis for them. So to take the two, take the two centers out of it. Basically the Celtics side of it, they took this game. And honestly, Tatum made a bunch of shots and Tatum was, was awesome late in this game. And their backcourt, man. There were so many moments where this Drew Holiday, Derek White backcourt just caused so many issues. Um, there was like, so uh, it was like a minute and eighteen left. Anthony Edwards had the ball, and you're like, okay, you got to score, you got to score like one or two more times, and you guys can can get this win. Yeah. So he got Horford on a switch, and then he had to give the ball up with like eight seconds left because they sent a double right at the right time. Derek White came right up as soon as they needed to. And then uh, Kyle Anderson was guarded by Drew Holiday. Had to make something happen with like six seconds left on the shot clock. It just threw up a wild shot, and that really threw them off. And then Ant was 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 doubled again. The next possession they had the ball threw it to McDaniel's. Jaden McDaniel's threw an air ball three because Drew Holiday was guarding him. It was just like these two guards were all over the place. Uh, Derek White got an offensive rebound off of a Tatum missed uh, free throw with like 36 seconds left. On that one. I mean, th these guys and holiday hit the three with 25 seconds left off of a swing pass. Yeah. They gave the Celtics the lead with like 25 seconds. I mean, they were just all over the place in this game. And honestly, like I look at this game and the uh, it's maybe it's maybe it's the guy that covers the Mavs in me that, that looks at it and goes, man, if, T if Tatum doesn't win the title with this crew right now, this is this is the I think this is the best team he's had. Bro, listen, it, it, it's there's pieces at every level and we're starting to see a little bit more depth start to peek its head through. Um, I mean, off of the bench, I, I thought Sam Hauser gave you some decent minutes. Right. Um, Luke Cornette, I mean, you're going to get what you get from the, I'm not going to lie. I love seeing Luke Cornette on the floor just because Jim Boylan called him uh, a, a Robert Ory type player. So every time I see him, I just go, oh, look at Robert Ory. <laughs> Is that a thing he really said? Yes, he really did. He literally wow. went Luke Cornette can be a Robert Ory type player when Luke Cornette was in like year three or four. <laughs> 
And it was just Robert, like Robert Ory. Does he know Robert Ory was a starter? Like, hey, he started hey, games. Oh, hey, hey, Nick. I hate to tell you this. Luke Cornette started games for the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> it's not been a fun life for me, my friend. I've had a tough, like, you know, 20 years. <laughs> Luke Cornette oh. was in the starting lineup with Walt Lemon Jr., my friend. <laughs> also a real name in the NBA. No, but I think that they're, they're trying to find some depth here. This team really only goes about eight deep. But in the, when you look at those starters, right, and how Derek White's able to come out and give you some really good minutes, um, when when you're talking about on the other side, guys making impact plays. You've got a bunch of guys that can do that. I got my scores. I've got my Jalen Brown. I've got my Jason Tatum. The thing that has been missing from this team for three years, pretty much every time they go for a deep run in the playoffs is those guys that can make those impact plays. You know where Drew Holiday was when the Celtics were getting beat and couldn't make those impact plays? He was over in Milwaukee making impact plays. And so it's really good to see him on this team doing that. And, And I just feel like now this is the perfect mix. And it feels like there's enough at every position, maybe right. You want to see a little bit more off of the bench, but you're getting really good minutes out of bench pieces you have. I get worried about the Jalen Brown piece of it sometimes, though. With them, he had he had a chance late, and, uh, and I think it was in, in in regulation, wasn't it? Where he drew, where he drove right to the lane and just like yeah. he just threw up some garbage. Uh, you get worried about that for them, but this is the I think this is the best team that they've had, and and you got to think that Tatum and Brown are at the you know are at another another level. This is the most older. defined it's been, wouldn't you say? Like this is the most Roles that it feels defined, like yeah. Jason Tatum is the well, one, Jalen Brown is the two. Well, and also we got that story. What was it like a week ago where Gordon Hayward said, Hey, that team with me and Kyrie and, and, yeah. and, and them was like, nobody was defined at all basically yeah. at that point. And so, yeah, definitely the most defined team that they've had role wise, hierarchy wise and all that. And Porzingis is, is filling in that when he plays, uh, you know, Al Horford's going to do it. Little, little jab there when he plays <laughs> look foul. Little, little poor Zingus jab on that one. You should see the it's smile. A, it's, a, it's more like a sad jab. You should jab. see the it's smile. More like a sad jab. I, I, was, <laughs> I so wanted that to work out. Uh, coming up, let's talk about the most interesting, fun things the NBA in. Count it up. Including the Bucks equipment manager taking some strays and uh, and D'Angelo Russell on a podcast doing some weird stuff. We'll talk about that in more. Big coming. shot. Today's episode brought to you by Jace Medical. You can get Jace Medical today, and it'll help you and give you peace of mind to know that you are prepared for something happening. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in a decade, and that can be scary for somebody with a family. The Jace case packs five different antibiotics in a, in a, uh, to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses like UTIs, respiratory infections, sinuses, skin infections, many other stuff that you would just take for granted if you could go to the doctor, if you could get the right medication. Sometimes you can't. So check it out. They have them in this case. I got one right here. You've got the medications and you can have them to have that peace of mind going forward in your life. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use the code locked on to get $20 off your order of a Jace case to help you prepare during emergencies or during times of stress. Go to jacemedical.com and use the code locked on to get $20 off your first order. Jacemedical.com. All right, Pat. Which 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 pills were those, Nick? Which, which you want to see which ones? Which, are? which Jace know. which Jace pills did you order? Nick? For illnesses and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Oh, oh yeah. All right, Pat. It's that time again. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of pills, big chicken baby. Zion Williams and porn stuff. Take that for that. Count it up. Count it up. Count it up. You're in on the theme now. You weren't in on the theme at, at, at first. It's grown on you. I, uh, shout out to DJ White White. <laughs> Is that my name now? That's your name now. Yeah. DJ White White. Giannis is into Kupo. DJ White White. Giannis is into Kupo this week after a loss said, we have to be better. We have to play better. We have to defend better. We have to trust one another better. We have to be coached better. Every single thing. Everybody has to be better. Everybody. It starts from the equipment manager. He has to wash our clothes better. The day after this... The Bucks social media on Twitter posted a picture of the jerseys hanging up with just the caption, extra clean. My question is, 
Why was the equipment manager catching strays? Was it fair I, or not fair? I mean, listen, I, I feel like that was one of those uh, you were just trying to make sure that everybody felt included, right? Like, I <laughs> listen, everybody gets Is a that, championship ring. That's not something ring. I want to be included. <laughs> nah, but here's the thing. If you get a championship ring, you got to come you down with us. That's you got you right. to you right. be you on our it. level. Listen, if we're struggling, you're struggling because you get a ring <laughs> when we get a ring. So if you're down here, watch them jock straps better, bro. You, you're doing a bad job. Giannis has got some itch. That's what he's saying. He's telling you, you got to be better, bro. Uh, I it, it is an interesting quote for him to be <laughs> top down like that, like completely everybody. And he meant every he, statement. After he meant Jack everybody. Stress. Not as wild as his button that one time. Uh, <laughs> top, like, everybody has to be out on this, and, that, and he meant everybody. He he wanted to make a statement, and when he wanted to make, he wanted to make a statement. He included even. <laughs> The equipment manager <laughs> and all that. So shout you out to the Bucks. You rarely get me. That was good. You rarely get me. <laughs> shout out to the Bucks, equipment manager, and their social team. Great stuff on that one. Uh, all right, D'Angelo Russell went on a podcast that I just saw right before we jumped on here, oh, uh, and um, he had some thoughts about how he's being used with okay. with the Lakers right. on a basketball level. He also had some podcast etiquette that I I wouldn't say is the best. He's He's eating a plate of fruit during this. So I just wanted to listen and tell me, I'll do the count it up before I play this. Count it up. <laughs> What's wilder? D'Angelo Russell's takes on himself or him eating fruit in the middle of a podcast? I get into my flow state in a pick and roll when it comes to the game. So if I can tap into pick and rolls and recognize how they guard me, it allows me to control the game because I can get to what I know is working or might not work. It's like playing the game within the game, but... I'm in my space. I ain't just catching and shooting. Now I'm in y'all space. If I miss, y'all took me out the game. Y'all just took me out the game. If I'm missing, if that's all I'm doing is catching and shooting. But if I'm getting to do what I know I can do, <clears throat> which honestly, I feel like that's when I'm at my best, when I just have a roller and a shooter. Somehow, some way around me, just a roller and a shooter. You can put whatever else in the other two spots. The mouth noises, just the just <laughs> the mouth noises, and him just going off about how he gets in his flow state. He's got to have a roller and a shooter. Bro, I didn't just, hear any of the <laughs> basketball takes, bro. I I am flabbergasted. Like, was that an Adam Twenty Two podcast? Was that so, a? Uh, it's it's that two a, dudes sit on the couch and they're hey, yo, like they're like you gotta. <laughs> It's they're lo they're locked in fully clothed. Two guys in there, they're locked in, and it's D'Angelo Russell sitting on the end, of the, the other end of it, just with like this like paper plate with like just cut up fruit on it, and he's just picking it up during it and just eating it, making those noises the whole time. That that was that was wild, bro. I apologize. Do we need to throw an NSFW on that for? Uh... People that might listen to this podcast out loud. That sounds, that sounded bad. And I got to wear headphones. That made it worse. That was tough. That was tough times for all of us. Uh, I apologize for um, uh, delivering that directly to your ear canals. Hey, yo. Victor, Victor Wembanyama tonight, 16 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists in 21 minutes of play. He's the youngest center in NBA history with a uh, triple double. Russell Westbrook is the only player to get a triple double in less minutes. He did it in 20 minutes in 2014. Uh, Count it up. What's more impressive about this? The being with the youngest center in NBA history or being the second fastest? Um, Not fastest, le least least amount of time, because Luke yeah. has definitely done it in 20 minutes. But. Um, I would say being the youngest center. That, that's more impressive to me that's because v Victor Wembignana is doing something that only Lebr LeBron has done. He has lived up to the hype that we have built around him so much so that we're looking at one of the greatest coaches of all time, Greg Popovich and going, Hey, why aren't you giving this dude <laughs> to ball more? Second what's guessing. your beef? What, what, what's your, what are you trying to like? Keep Victor in his place. We don't want you to get too hype out it. He's averaging 19 points a game, basically doing nothing. He's just running around and when he gets the ball off of rebounds and puts it back in. And every now and then he'll get like that pump fake up and under drive to the lane where he throws it off the backboard, doesn't jump, catches it and dunks the basketball in like Howard. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Cut everybody except Devin Vassell. And just let them figure it out. Pick and roll all day. Bro, like, it, 
he doesn't give Wimbenyama the ball. I don't think Vassell runs pick and roll like that, though. I've seen him a couple. It doesn't I've seen matter. Him a couple times now. Listen, I, it doesn't I, matter. All you got to do is throw the ball up. <laughs> and there's a seven foot ten dude. F it, Wemby's up there somewhere. He's up there somewhere. <laughs> Jamar chase it. That's Jamar exactly. chase this one, bro. Just throw it up. I I I I love everything about Victor Wembyama. I love that he's living up to the hype, and uh, I think that he's gonna be. Uh, the, the fact that he's done this as the youngest center is very impressive because uh, there's there's some pretty good centers that have come into this league and, and can handle the basketball. Last one. Draymond Green is working with the NBA to get back to playing with the Warriors after his suspension, leave of absence. I don't know yeah. what you want to call it. He said on his podcast this week that Adam Silver talked him out of retirement. Scale of zero to five. <laughs> zero being no shot. Five being, I believe, every part of this. Count it up. How much do you believe this whole story? First of all, that he was considering retirement, and then that Adam Silver was the one that talked him out of it. I I'll <laughs> listen. I can believe it. I I I'll, I'll give it a six. I'll give it a six. just on, just <laughs> on the other no, side. No, it's, it's just, zero to five. Oh, zero to five. I give <laughs> I give it a three. I give it a okay, three. Like right, six. just on the other side. Just on the other side. Here's the issue that I have. Adam Silver basically comes to Draymond and goes, you got to stop punching people in the face. And Draymond <laughs> and Green goes, places. bro. And Draymond Green just goes, F it, I quit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This is this is the one. I can't do this anymore. Oh. Well, I, can't, I can't deal with this kind of pressure. I can't kick people below the weight. Come on. It's what I do. I just, I don't know. I thought that was a little bit wild when I heard that he was like, I can't punch people anymore. Got to retire. That's it for me. <laughs> I believe he was at the point where he didn't want to do this anymore because there's there's something go. I mean, there's something going on there. Like yeah, there's yeah, something yeah. where he's he's over. He's he's like I don't want to go full therapy again on this show. We've done it several times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets flooded and he just like blacks out because he saw that clip of him like dragging Rudy Gobert and goes, "Man, I didn't even realize I was doing it for that long." Like this dude is not paying attention to like <laughs> what. Like, Another time where Cat was a bad number two. <laughs> <laughs> another time you got a circle you got it i'm sorry got this full circle. but i do i don't i'm giving this i'm giving this a two because i do not believe that adam silver is the one that talked him out of it come on really adam silver the like he's the one that did it like you didn't talk to anybody else listen i i also I, also he just re-signed an extension <laughs> listen, right like I, I, can, I can consider him being like ah, i'm a little fed up with this like you can't just retire and like you bro, signed a hundred million dollar deal. I'm fully willing to believe that him talking him out of it was Draymond going, man, I can't deal with this. I'm done with this. And Adam Silver was like, we don't need to go that far, bro. Like I just said, stop punching <laughs> people in the face. Like, <laughs> why are you so upset? <laughs> He's like every guy from some kind or every person from some kind of like competition show where they're like, ah, I quit. And they walk out and their whole team is like, no, well, don't quit. And they're like, okay, I won't. And like, I just can't be in this fight no more. Deep down in my heart, we need I you. Still love Come you. back. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. There you go. Let us know in the comment section. Is this a better deal for Kawhi or the Clippers with the extension? And uh, go listen to Locked On Bulls with Pat, the designer, and with Hayes. Yeah. We've got great stuff talking about the uh, win. Did they, they won, right? They did win. They did win. Mavs, we're talking about trades today. Trades for a power forward, trades for a backup center, maybe Andre Drummond. We'll talk about all that uh, on Locked On Mavs. Check out the show that covers your team every day in the link in the description. Guys, thanks for listening to Locked On NBA. Bye bye. Boom. <laughs> D'Angelo Russell eating fruit. <laughs> Such a pause. It's a pure pause.